One reason why things are looking that well is that we had a huge buffer when we went into the crisis. If you look at the balance of trade when we went into the crisis, we had uh, a surplus in the trade balance that was almost as large as the whole exports of the telecom sector. So even now, when the whole telecom sector, telecom ex export disappear, our trade balance of trade is roughly balanced because that's much worse than the situation. So we <coughs> that, that, that obviously to 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 uh, as, as a buffer. So that is is part of the story. Uh, uh, another part of the story is, is that if you look in, in terms of employment, actually, the actual manufacturing of phones uh, never was a huge employer. Uh, the peak, the electric. Uh, uh, the, Electronic sector was was five six percent of our GDP. In terms of employment, it never went above three, and it hasn't gone down as sharply. Now this is now the slightly a slightly larger segment than than, than uh, just the electronic parts because we don't have have, have uh, employment statistics for only the, the electronic sector. Uh, that's because. Uh, well, partly because some statistics are not released simply because if one company is too dominant in a sector, the Finnish statistics ethics concludes that they can't publish the statistics for that sector because that would reveal company secrets. Um. But then another thing, if we look, like, yes, in the actual manufacturing process, employment has gone down. But what we can see clearly in Finnish statistics, something we've heard several times before today, that the demand for skilled labor has not suffered. And even though if you look at, at who Nokia employed at its peak in Finland, it was mostly skilled labor. Um, uh, which are captured in, in this uh, group, professional, scientific, and technical uh, employees, program develop product developers of different kinds, technical engineers, uh, so forth, uh, rather designers, so forth, rather than actual. And we haven't seen a, 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 a decrease in the employment in, <coughs> in Finland, even uh, as Nokia was run down. Now, there are several explanations for this. Uh, and one explanation is simply that what the goods, exports of goods statistics are telling us is not really the full truth. Because, yes, when a mobile phone was produced in Finland and exported, it was recorded at exports of goods. But actually, the value added of that phone was mainly product development. And when production is not moved move abroad, and Microsoft have, has bought product development of Nokia, Finland is now exporting product development to the US as a services export. Uh, the other reason for this uh, is that even of those who lost their jobs, the success rate of getting new employment for these has been fairly high. Uh, Nokia has very actively managed this process uh, and, and try to encourage people to, to start up new businesses. And actually, I think the next slide is if you look at the number of self employed, uh, you can see a turning point in, in, in when the economic crisis 
when art is important, though I understand that it suffered, or I mentioned suffered rather from the crisis in Finland, we have seen a 10% increase in the number of self employed um, Well, of course, that category consists of a very diverse uh, uh, combination of, of people. Might be de facto unemployed, or trying to get make work for themselves desperately, coming up with ideas. Um, but uh, uh, there's also people who are now, after having worked 20 years in Nakia, having accumulated uh, a nest egg, are taking the chances to create something new uh, and, and uh, well, with the help of a push out now are, are, are trying to are, are prepared to, 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 to try to fulfill the dream and of course what comes out of this is, um, uh, is another thing uh, and even regardless of this uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, a lasting legacy of Nokia even if we don't have Nokia uh, anymore is it, it has built up skills in Finland uh, that has started to generate companies in other sectors. Well, of course, uh, some obvious successes that everybody has heard of, like Angryverse, mm -hmm. uh, other Finnish mo mobile games, game companies, but in, in many other. Uh, uh, sectors and some of the former engineers for, from Nokia are now working in Finland as experts for, for example, Chinese mobile phone manufacturers. So it's and this doesn't show up in, in the goods. Actually, it doesn't show up. You can try to find it in the Finnish economic statistics, and you don't, because the, the, there is simply there is simply no such segment in, in the Finnish uh, official statistics that records this business. But it's significant. Well, I mean, we can see it on the aggregate level. I, mean, I will show you. Uh, oh, if we look at services exports for uh, for Finland. Uh, it's roughly the same story as, as in Sweden. Services exports now accounts for a third of our total exports. And actually, if you look at the value added terms, as, as I mentioned, it also for Finland, we are over 50% over already. Um, so that's where, where, where the action is, and, and Finland is still, uh, is still engaged in that. Okay. So, um, well, the final question I was given in the title was, uh, what then? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've sort of answered the what then. Uh, and, and I'm a bit uncomfortable when I get this question. I mean, working as an, as an economist in Finland, I'm talking at uh, very many public occasions. I've run into this question many times. Um, and I'm uncomfortable at answering this because well, we could go back to the first lecture we had today. But it's the future of the Finnish economy, as for any economy, is a question of entrepreneurial discovery. That is, you get to, to get entrepreneurs with new ideas who, who can spot where they can, can can manage and if I would know that if I would have an idea I would be an uh, entrepreneur. Well, by the way, I'm an entrepreneur and I have an idea. Uh, that's another story. That's what well, this market knows here is a company which has an uh, a, a, a startup company which has 
zero revenue and has an ambition of becoming an export company, mainly, mainly delivering services in the financial IT sector. Um, that's another story. Um, so, so, so the key question is, uh, uh, is who not, I mean, we need entrepreneurs who, 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 who has an idea and, and no economist, nobody can sit with the wisdom to say where the future ideas will come. Uh, typically, if you look, uh, politicians start to, to um, well, everybody who starts to talk tries to build up a vision and then comes down to the same thing. At least in Finland, it's typically, it's IT, it's green technology, we should just focus more on those sectors and then everything will be dandy. And of course, if everybody else is focusing on the same sectors, then um, that will be very crowded and very hard to succeed in, in those sectors. What I, what I tried to, but what, what I did uh, as the final thing, I made a list of a few Finnish companies uh, which uh, have the thing in common that they very profitable, rapidly growing, their uh, revenues of around well, at least tens of millions of euros, and then uh, fairly small companies, but they all have a huge amount of exports. Uh, and the point I want to make is these are not the solutions as such to, to, to Finland's problems. Uh, but these kinds of companies are what I think is the solution to Finland's problems. Uh, and that, that it doesn't come from finding a, a new Nokia or a new sector. It's from finding companies that just managed to, to, to succeed. My, my favorite of these, actually, if, if I just tell, tell you, well, Halton is perhaps one I should mention. For, for, for those of, of you who during last year's train ride or otherwise are concerned about uh, uh, heat indoors, there, the Halton group is, is focused on uh, indoors climate management. So they're basically making solutions to things like trains being too hot. Of course, that's not their, their perhaps the most dif difficult task they're, they're engaged with. But at least that's something that I recognized yesterday that Sweden could use. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> but, but, but they make things like, like clean laboratory environments in, uh, where, where air quality uh, uh, Air temperature is, is perfect. That's the, the high tech. But my favorite example of, of where the future comes from uh, um, is, is Koveho Mirka, which is situated very far out of Helsinki. I mean, it's further in the regions than far away. Um, uh, it's a company that, old company that used to manufacture sandpaper. Go out, order a kind of polish What they, what they, ex they now have 95 percent of their production going to exports all around the world. <coughs> sandpaper. Now, what they do is high quality sandpaper. Now, what is high quality sandpaper? Very crazy idea. Well, the basic idea is that you make the paper of such uh, quality that the grains are exactly the same 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 size, uh, equally distributed over the paper, so that it can be used in the car industry all over the world to polish, finish the polish on 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 the, on the cars. So I mean, that that, that I think is is an example of of today's or or, or the world of the future. Uh, I mean, small ideas, finding the niche that nobody else is, has found it. Probably the niche is not something that any, well, not any 
economists sitting in Helsinki can figure out, or any politician can figure out. And you need to have the entrepreneur who has the specific knowledge, sees the opportunity, uh, and grabs it. I know, I think I've used my comment.